ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. The Drive with Paul Swan. Good afternoon. I'm Bill Cornwell sitting in for Paul Swan with The Drive on this the seventh day of August 2018. Just a few days into fall drills for Marshall football and most uh, college football teams around the country. It'll be game week before you know it. Of course, September 1st, uh, Marshall kicks it off down at uh, Miami of Ohio against the Red Hawks. Uh, be on the air with all the activity, the pregame at 1230 right here on ESPN 94.1. And, of course, the uh, game will kick off down at Jaeger Stadium in Oxford, Ohio at 3.30 as the Herd and the Red Hawks uh, start the season. Of course, a lot of other football coming up that weekend as we'll certainly touch on it today. But we're going to hit a little bit of everything today. Uh, we're going to start off with a little bit of news. Uh, Marshall uh, makes uh, news in the Marshall women's basketball program. After about a, a two-month delay, they have filled the final coaching vacancy on the women's basketball team, we'll tell you about that person, a very qualified individual who's going to be an assistant women's basketball coach. Coming up in about 10 minutes, uh, looking forward to our conversation with uh, who I call the dean of uh, play-by-play announcers in Conference USA, and that's Mr. John Cox, the voice of the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. We're going to check in with John, talk a little uh, football down at Southern Miss, and also talk about uh, uh, Conference USA. And uh, the fact that Conference USA football wise is in a good spot right now, uh, Coach Doc Holliday made the uh, the point last week before um, fall practice began that this is the best Conference USA has been uh, as far as top to bottom quality that, that he's seen. Of course, this is Doc's ninth year at Marshall, and uh, by far he says uh, this is the strongest league that Conference USA has had as far as quality football teams. Remember last year they had 10 teams that uh, were bowl eligible and nine teams went to bowls. And that's impressive when you think about the fact that Conference USA only has six bowl tie-ins. So they actually were able to fill that three spots in bowls that other leagues could not put teams in. And one of those teams uh, was Southern Miss. Southern Miss ended up in the... uh, Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. Unfortunately for them, it was not a happy result. They had to take on the Florida State Seminoles, and uh, they lost to Florida State pretty handily in that contest, 42 to 13. But still, it is a strong time for Conference USA football. And we'll talk to to John Cox in a few minutes about that. Also, I'll uh, talk a little bit today about those upcoming uh, uh, Marshall and Kentucky. Uh, Hoops trips to uh, the Bahamas. Kentucky is already in the Bahamas down in uh, around uh, Atlantis, the resort down there. And they actually will be tipping off their games tomorrow. And then Marshall, they'll get going a little bit later this weekend. Uh, they'll not actually head down to the Bahamas until late this week, uh, actually early weekend and then get going most of their games next week. Now, of course, we're going to be having coverage of Kentucky's games in the Bahamas starting tomorrow evening, airtime at 6.30, and we'll carry those games on AM 1340. The Cats will be playing on Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Saturday night, and then Sunday afternoon before heading home to Lexington. And we'll have, again, coverage of all four of those games live from the Bahamas on AM 1340. We wish we could bring you coverage of Marshall's games, but unfortunately, uh, no broadcast planned of the Marshall games down in the Bahamas. Believe me, we tried. We tried. We're going to wrap up today. We'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, some NASCAR activity. Of course, uh, the big news in NASCAR, the arrest of NASCAR's boss, Brian France, on Sunday night. Uh, He's facing some serious uh, uh, DWA charges up in the Hamptons and Long Island. And uh, that causes some issues as far as the leadership of NASCAR. I'll also have the latest on the Ohio State football situation. Uh, Of course, the suspension of Coach Urban Meyer. Also, a little bit of news from NFL camp. And and we're going to talk about Marshall's own Vinnie Curry having some fun today at uh, 
Tampa Bay Bucks camp with a couple of his wrestling heroes. For many of you know Vinny, he does like pro wrestling. Well, he got to see a couple of his pro wrestling heroes who stopped by Tampa Bay Bucks training camp today, and we'll talk a bit about that a little bit later. But first, um, let's talk about this hire from Marshall. Uh, Marshall's women's basketball team hired a new assistant coach today, and it is Adria Crawford. And Crawford comes to Huntington after four years on the staff at the College of Charleston, where she focused on developing the team's post and wing players, two of which graduated and played professionally overseas. She was also very instrumental in handling the day-to-day operation of the program's academic and compliance efforts and directed the team's off-season camp in addition to coordinating Charleston's film exchange. Now, before Charleston, she was on the staff at Longwood, where she was involved in all aspects of the Lancers program, including both on- and off-campus recruiting, opponent scouting, game plan preparation. She also assisted with the coordination of team travel, player skill development, and practice preparation. Uh, Crawford, uh, a little quote here from her. She says, I'm truly excited for this opportunity at Marshall. Coach Tony Kemper is a fantastic person. I'm confident he's moving the program in the right direction. The atmosphere at Marshall is unmatched, and I can't wait to fully experience all the pride the community and the campus holds. Prior to her time with Longwood, Crawford was a four-year member of the women's basketball team at Georgetown. She was a Hoya. Crawford um, and the Hoyas reached three NCAA tournaments, including an appearance in the 2011 Sweet 16. So uh, she played in some uh, tough competition, women's basketball-wise, in the Big East. Um, she was also in a Women's Basketball Coaches Association 30 Under 30 honoree in 2018. Quote from uh, Coach Tony Kemper of the Herd. She's, he says, we're thrilled to add Adria Crawford to our women's basketball family. She possesses tremendous energy for our game and that will be infectious for our student athletes. Her playing career at Georgetown and recruiting ties along the East Coast will be a tremendous asset to what we are building here at Marshall. Uh, Crawford's a native of Alexandria, Virginia, so it was a kind of a natural tie-in that she go to Georgetown, just right across the Potomac from her home in Alexandria, Virginia, and she has a uh, Bachelor of Art degrees in Sociology and Theology from Georgetown in 2012. So Marshall has filled that uh, hole in their uh, coaching staff in the women's basketball program. Adria Crawford hired today. Um, she replaces Katie Pate. Katie Pate was an assistant for Marshall for one season and uh, is now at Georgia State down in Atlanta. And Marshall had that uh, vacancy for a couple of months this summer, but uh, they have built it. And so uh, Marshall's women's basketball coaching staff is fully staffed now with the hiring of Adria Crawford. And uh, it's onward and upward for Tony Kemper, and certainly Tony Kemper and the women's basketball program hoping for much better things this year. Uh, it was a, quite a struggle last year to get wins, uh, really struggling Conference USA. Uh, Marshall will have one of the better players coming back uh, in Shana Gore, and we'll have some size inside. Uh, last year, it wasn't uh, just uh, maybe a little bit of youth that was a problem for Marshall, but a lot of injuries, and the injuries really decimated the herd and uh, because of the injuries, they really lost uh, game time. And uh, that is uh, something that certainly uh, Tony Kemper and the Herd hope to overcome this year. So congratulations to Adria Crawford. Welcome to Huntington. Welcome to Marshall. Welcome to the Thundering Herd family. And as she said, she uh, looking forward to experiencing some of the, the uh, magic and some of the excitement dealing with uh, Marshall Athletics. Right now, we're going to take our first break, and when we come back, looking forward to talking to this guy, the Dean of Conference USA Radio Play-By-Play Men, John Cox from the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. It's going to be on the other side here on The Drive. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Good afternoon right now, about 18 minutes after 5 on The Drive. Bill Cornwell sitting in for Paul Swan today. And uh, really looking forward to our next guest. Um, 
He is, I, I call him the Dean of Conference USA Radio Play-By-Play Men. And he's the one guy in Conference USA I can talk a little Reds baseball with when we're down on the road. Uh, John Cox, good afternoon, John. Hey, good to see you. Good to talk to you, my friend. Hope everything's going well for you this summer. Well, uh, you're kind of like we are, John. We're kind of in uh, uh, hold mode here as far as uh, watching and uh, observing uh, early stages of fall football practice. And uh, uh, First off, coming into the season, uh, how many years is this for you uh, as the play-by-play man for Southern Miss? This is going to be my uh, 41st year being a part of the broadcast here at uh, Southern Miss. And for a a little old boy from Middletown, Ohio, growing up, if you'd have told me that, I'd uh, I'd have probably said you were crazy. But, uh, yeah, 40... 40, 40 great years, and looking forward to number 41. Yeah, we're, we're lucky in, in Conference USA to have you and, of course, Dave Nitz, a uh, uh, guy from right around here in Milton, West Virginia, and a longtime play-by-play guy at, at Louisiana Tech. And, uh, uh, you know, there's so many guys. And, of course, our own Steve Cotton, who has over 20 years as the voice of the herd, uh, blessed with uh, some talent in this league as far as uh, calling play-by-play, John. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It, it, it's always, you know, Steve... Steve Cotton's one of my favorites, and uh, Dave Nitz as well. And uh, I always love when we uh, get to, to see each other and visit, and we tell a lot of old stories and a lot of new stories. So it's a lot of fun to see those guys, and uh, proud to call them my colleagues and my friends in the Conference USA. Well, John, uh, let's talk a little bit about the Golden Eagles. Uh, uh, of course, the Golden Eagles, uh, when, we la- when we last saw them last year, of course, they left Huntington. Uh, what it has been kind of rare in recent years, they left Huntington with a uh, a tough win and uh, went into a uh, bowl game. You know, they ended up playing in the Independence Bowl. They were able to fill one of the bowl slots that was missing. But unfortunately, it was uh, kind of a tough opponent in Florida State, John, and uh, it was kind of a tough way to end the season, 42-13 to the Seminoles. Yeah, it was. But, you know, this is a, this is a Golden Eagle ball club uh, with Jay Hobson, who's a former you know, Marshall assistant under Coach Pruitt back in the, I guess, in the late 90s. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Hop is doing, or Ike is doing a great job of, of kind of not not trying to, to come up with any quick fixes. He's trying to build the foundation back uh, to Southern Miss football, to what we we all remember it being back, uh, you know, when Jeff Bauer was here and, you know, and during that great run that he had. So, uh, you know, last year was, I can know, one of those building blocks. He's got a lot of good young players that he's brought into the program and and now some veterans who are going to play for the third year under coach Hobson. So, uh, you know, it's one of those, I think you just, if you look at it the right way, he's, he's building this thing, you know, up with a great foundation uh, behind uh, what he's trying to do here at Southern Miss. So I'm looking forward to it. I think uh, it's a great mixture, as I said, of young, young guys and veteran guys. So it should be a, a lot of fun when we open the season here about four weeks against Jackson State. Of course, uh, Marshall will play down at uh, at the Rock at Roberts Stadium on November 3rd, John. And uh, you, know, you talked about Marshall links with Jay Hobbs, and uh, you got another one now. Uh, the co-defensive coordinator for the, the Golden Eagles is another former Marshall assistant and a guy who was at Marshall here for quite a while with both Coach Pruitt and Coach Jim Donnan and Tim Billings. Yeah, Tim. Tim is, uh, you know, he's a guy that, uh, you know, he says when he came here three years ago, he was he wasn't retired. But I think he might have been coaching a little high school ball. But he said there's one guy he would have come back to work for, and that was Jay Hobson. Yeah. And uh, you know, now Jay has called on him to be the defensive coordinator. And I like I like Tim. I think Tim's really a smart guy when it comes to to football, in particular defensive football. And and so uh, I think that's a good combination. And uh, I think he's doing a great job with. With a relatively young Golden Eagle defense, we lost a lot of uh, veteran guys out of the secondary. But you know, I think Tim's Tim's got them going. Uh, he's got all those young guys kind of in the mix right now. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch uh, that defense. I love to I love to sit around. In fact, I was sitting with Tim Billings the other day, and we were talking about uh, some of the guys that have been through Southern Miss that also had been through Marshall. Guys like Barry Keck and. And Bill Wilt and uh, Hobson and Tim Billings and guys like that. So uh, a lot of connections over the years yeah. between the Golden Eagles and the Thundering Herd. Well, John, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the offensive situation. Uh, of course, uh, fans up here in Huntington are kind of watching the quarterback battle. Uh, most folks think Alex Thompson, the Wagner transfer, will uh, be the signal 
Rockies in kind of a three-man competition. Uh, uh, in the spring, uh, Keon Howard and Quadri Griggs were kind of uh, battling, and of course Griggs was the starter last year when uh, Marshall and Southern Miss played at Jones C. Edwards Stadium. Uh, uh, what's that quarterback situation looking like down at Southern Miss? Well, you know, Howard's left the ball club. He left oh, okay. uh, the last last few weeks uh, before the uh, preseason practices. And uh, uh, but it is a three may it is a three way battle, I think, right now, or at least a two man anyway. You've got uh, Quadre Griggs, who, as you said, has uh, been a starter. He's battled some injuries through his career, but you know he was the one of the starters or the starter last year. Uh, we've got a guy named Jack Abraham who uh, started his career at Louisiana Tech transferred to Northwest Mississippi Community College and then, you know, re-signed and came down to Hattiesburg uh, this year. And then Marcelo Rodriguez, who's a uh, redshirt freshman who uh, has got a lot of talent. So I think it's one of the things they, they, they look to try to, to remedy. There were some situations several years ago when Nick Mullins was our quarterback that when Nick got hurt, you just didn't have a lot of guys behind him. And, and so now they've got several really good quarterbacks who – I think are all going to battle for the uh, starting job. I think Griggs is right now the leader, battling a little bit with Abraham and Rodriguez, but at least there's some depth there. That's something the Golden Eagles haven't had in a couple of years. In the backfield for uh, Southern Miss, uh, John, uh, uh, I know one guy that uh, heard fans are probably glad he's gone is Ito Smith. <laughs> Tell you what, he had a last couple of seasons, he had good games against Marshall, both receiving and running the ball. And, um, uh, he's gone, and of course, uh, you had uh, Corey Robinson. He he left school early to right. enter the NBL NFL draft. Uh, I guess Tez Parks, I guess, is the the leading man coming in. Yeah, Tez Tez right now would be the uh, the leader there, but uh, you know that that's a group that also has got some guys that uh, you know have seen a little bit of action. We saw a guy named T. Rod Daniels last year. He's kind of a uh, you know, a, a run pass guy like, you know, like, uh, Tez Parks is. There's some young guys who are making a name for themselves. There's George Payne. George has sat out last year. He's a guy that's battled some injuries, but, you know, he's a guy that's rushed for 940 yards and nine touchdowns in his Golden Eagle career, but he sat out last year. Steve Anderson's a former tight end who's a big guy at 6'2, 242, who they've moved from quarterback and tight end now back to running back and so uh you know there's there's probably a little more depth there than you would think but it certainly is tough to replace a guy you know like Edo Smith who was uh, such a, a triple threat he could catch it he could uh, run with it he could be a return guy for you so hard to replace guys like that Corey Robertson's a guy who really blossomed uh you know in his junior year at Southern Miss so you miss those two parts and you got to find a couple of guys to or several guys to step in and replace those guys this year. Re- receiving core, uh, uh, a lot of guys gone. Uh, kind of uh, graduation and other things kind of decimated that. But you do have one quality guy who is a playmaker in Quez Watkins back. Yeah, Quez is back. And then we got a guy named uh, Jalen Adams, who's a, a sophomore who caught uh, you know several balls last year as a, uh, a true freshman. So both of those guys are back. And they've added... They've added a couple of junior college guys and, uh, you know, a couple of young guys who I think are going to help them there in the passing game. Uh, I think they got a lot of speed. Uh, I think uh, they don't have what they don't have an experience. I think they've got with speed. I think they've recruited a lot of uh, speed there at that wide receiver spot. And, you know, in Shannon Dawson's uh, offense, the uh, Eagles are going to want to throw it around a lot. And so you got to have, you know, some guys who go out there and catch the football. So including the running back. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see how some of those young wide receivers sort of uh, develop as the season progresses. Boy, as, as far as uh, old reliable, you, uh, when you get uh, in kicking distance and, you, and things kind of slow down, kind of uh, get a little bit uh, stagnated, it's awful nice to be able to call on Parker Schoenfeld, and he is back as your place kicker. Yeah, he is. Uh, he has really had a great career at Southern Miss. You know, he's... Uh, Guy's only missed three field goals in his in his Golden Eagle career. He's a guy that's been nearly perfect in uh, PATs in his career. So uh, he's you're right. He's kind of the old reliable guy there. If uh, you get down there and you can't get it in the end zone, he's been pretty reliable to get to three points. So uh, he's going to be a guy they're going to count on a lot this year. And then Briggs Bourgeois 
uh, is back as the kickoff guy. You got uh, uh, Zach Everett back as the punter. So uh, and and some good return guys back there as well. So I think the the special teams, which has always been a Jay Hops and Tim Billings thing, that they like yeah. to be really good in the special teams. I I think the Golden Eagles will be that this year. You, you talked a little, a little bit about uh, the way we've talked about you know having to fill up a lot of holes. Uh, looking at uh, kind of uh, the coverage of the the Golden Eagles, it doesn't hurt, and and certainly Southern Miss has taken advantage of this that there are so many. Junior colleges in Mississippi, and there, there's so much talent down there in those junior colleges. Of course, everybody in the country uh, hits those junior colleges. Southern Miss has done it's uh, it's done a nice job of hitting those and getting some good quality players. Yeah, you got to get guys. You know, you come in and help you, and I think that's where they've done a good job of uh, bringing guys in who have been able to to help them. And and we've got we do have several junior college guys that uh, are coming in to to hopefully uh, fill in some holes, particularly in the secondary. You know, we, we basically, you know, lost all, I think we had about five guys back there who played in the secondary who were all seniors on this uh, football team. And so, but there are a couple of guys back there who, uh, in Rashawn Mitchell and Picasso Nelson, who have had to, to play a little bit, have played a lot of football for us. So, uh, uh, you know, I got a lot of confidence in uh, the guys back there. I think they're going to get better and better as the year goes along and, I think the secondary may turn out to be one of the strengths of this football team. Look at the schedule for this year, uh, John. Uh, you've only got the really uh, a, a couple of, uh, I guess you could say, name opponents. You guys have uh, you have to go up talking about being playing at the Rock, where you're going to be going up what they call the Rock in Boone, North Carolina, uh, week three of the season. You guys go up to Appalachian State. Of course, Marshall fans have a lot of experience playing the, the Mountaineers up in Boone, and uh, you've got a, a, a game. <laughs> Down on the Plains on September 9th, 29th against Auburn. Uh, he opened the season against Jackson State at home, and that should be interesting because the guy who runs the offense for Jackson State is none other than former Kentucky coach Hal Mummy. Yeah, and the, the guy who's the head coach, Tony Hughes, was, was a, uh, a part of the Southern Miss coaching staff several years ago and uh, went to school with Southern Miss. And, you know, that game, I'd be surprised if that game, the Jackson State game, is not a sell played them twice. We played them 1987 when a guy named Brett Favre uh, mm. was the quarterback. And uh, there were eight guys. I looked up the other day. There were eight guys that played in that game in 87 that wound up playing in the NFL. So uh, <laughs> Jackson State's got a great history of uh, producing some NFL guys. And that'll be a sellout. That'll be a great yeah. way to start the season. Then uh, you're right. Appalachian State, just the third time Southern Miss has played them. And the uh, first time we've ever gone to Boone. Uh, to play him, and then a trip uh, to Auburn, and then uh, you know that conference USA schedule is going to be tough for Southern Miss, including as always that uh, the game with the Thundering Herd, which is uh, always a lot of fun when they come to town. So uh, it's it's going to be good. You gotta you gotta get off to a good start. Jackson State, Louisiana Monroe, Appalachian State. Rice and then Auburn, so you got to get off to a good start this year. Well, let's, let's talk about those races in the league, uh, John. Of course, in uh, in uh, the uh, East Side, uh, most folks are saying FAU, Marshall, uh, maybe Middle and FIU as far as the top four. Over on the on the West Side, where you're, where you're located, uh, yeah, La Tech, uh, North, North Texas, pretty much are considered the the favorites. Of course, uh, Southern Miss is going to be right in there as well. But I think you're right. In the West, I don't think there's any question that North Texas is, uh, you know, is probably the uh, the team to beat. Uh, boy, they, you know, they were really good a year ago. They're a, a team that likes to throw it around, uh, you know, the ballpark like a lot of teams do, and uh, they're they're a really good uh, team. But I hope, I hope the Golden Eagles, uh, you know, if some of the young guys come through, I hope the Golden Eagles will be right in the thick of things. But you know, Louisiana Tech's going to be. Uh, Good as well. San Antonio is always pretty good, so that'll be a that'll be a heck of a race, and it'll be a great race in the East as well. And uh, you know, I think Marshall's probably primed to make a make a run for things over there in the in the East this year. So uh, it'll be it'll be a great race, and I'm looking forward to it getting started here in a few weeks. Well, November third, uh, Marshall and uh, Southern Miss will do battle down on MM Roberts Stadium, The Rock, down in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and. John, it's been great talking to you today, and we will look forward to uh, seeing you down there then. And I know uh, uh, the, myself and the other folks in the travel party, are our only wishes, uh, just hopefully that, the, that there's plenty of ribs left at Lethus when we get down there. 
Well, we'll make sure. I tell you what, though, I love. I, I tell Steve all the time. I Huntington, one of my favorite places to come. I, I enjoy everything about Huntington. Love the people. Love the atmosphere there at the uh, at the stadium, and you know, there for basketball as well. So uh, that's one of my favorite places. So, but. I'm glad that the Thumbing Herd got to come to Hattiesburg that's this right. year. Hey, that's okay. We kind of like to come to Hattiesburg. John, a pre- pleasure as always, and uh, we'll talk to you down the road, my friend. Thanks, my friend. I appreciate you having me on, and we'll see you soon. All right. John Cox, the uh, 41-year voice of the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss, uh, the dean of uh, Conference USA play-by-play men, and uh, always great to talk to John. And, uh, of course, Marshall and Southern Miss, they've had uh, some good battles on – the football field mainly, and also on the basketball court over the years, and looking forward to uh, November 3rd, the Herd plays down in Hattiesburg. Uh, uh, start of a busy end of the season for the Herd with that game. Uh, it's going to be a big one. could be really big, depending on where Marshall is in the Conference USA race. Time to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about basketball, Marshall, and UK in the Bahamas when we get back on The Drive. Don't worry. Paul Swan has the wheel on the drive. ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. About 20 minutes in front of 6 o'clock. In for Paul Swan on the drive today. Thanks a lot to John Cox. Really enjoyed talking to John. Coming to us from Hattiesburg, Miss Southern Miss and Conference USA football. And uh, Southern Miss... Uh, not really considered one of the favorites in the west uh, side of CUSA this year. Um, had a lot of holes to fill, but uh, one thing they do have down there, we talked about it with John, they uh, do go to the JUCO route. There are so many junior colleges in Mississippi, and there are so many diamonds in the rough talent-wise down there that uh, they do their fair share of finding those players, and uh, they are on that uh, Southern Miss team, you got to watch out for them because uh, there are, there's speed, there is strength and talent on the Southern Miss Golden Eagle team. And Marshall, of course, will face the Golden Eagles down in Hattiesburg on November 3rd. But right now, we're talking basketball. We're talking uh, Marshall and Kentucky basketball playing in the Bahamas. Now, uh, Marshall will be uh, heading down to the Bahamas for three games. And their first game is going to come up on Saturday. But uh, Kentucky gets it going tomorrow. And we're going to have coverage of all four games Kentucky plays down in the Bahamas. They're going to be playing at the famous Atlanta Atlantis Resort, Paradise Island. Uh, this is a place where uh, you will see a tournament during November. Always draw some big-time talent. Among the teams that played down there last year was the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers of Conference USA. Well, uh, they have the court on the in the uh, ballroom for Kentucky, and the Cats begin play tomorrow night, and we'll have coverage of it on AM 1340. UK will be playing the Bahamas national team. Again, the 6.30 year time, 7 o'clock, they will tip it off. And then uh, other games coming up, 7 o'clock tip on Thursday night. UK will face San Lorenzo de Alamagro. And this is a team from Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Then uh, UK takes a break on Friday, and they're back at it on Saturday. Again, a 7 o'clock tip, 6.30 airtime on AM 1340. UK taking Mega Bimax. And this is a team from Serbia. Srimka Moravica, Serbia. UK will play them and then uh, Kentucky's time in the Bahamas will end on Sunday afternoon, 3.30 year time, AM 1340, 4 o'clock tip, as uh, UK will play Team Toronto. And um, Team Toronto actually has some guys uh, with uh, both uh, college and pro experience. Uh, NBA guy Andrew Nicholson plays on Team Toronto. And then Dwayne Notice, a guy who was... Uh, on that really good uh, South Carolina team a couple seasons ago, uh, members of Team Toronto. So uh, that, that's the schedule for UK. Marshall, they get it going on Saturday. They'll be playing 5 o'clock against the University of the Bahamas. Uh, Monday, the Herd will be playing the MPBA All-Stars. 
This is at 5.30. Then next Wednesday, Providence Storm, 6 o'clock, that game. So Marshall will be playing down the Bahamas on Saturday evening, Monday evening, and Wednesday evening, as we mentioned. Unfortunately, we will not be providing coverage of uh, those games. We wish we could have. I'm sure we could have convinced Steve Cotton to head down there, but uh, no radio coverage of Marshall's games down in the Bahamas. Marshall will be playing their games in the Sir Kendall Isaacs Gymnasium. It has about a 2,500 do- uh, c- capacity. Now, um, how is it that Marshall, UK, are down in the Bahamas at the same time? Well, actually, they are going to be uh, taking part in uh, an event in the Bahamas, and it has been ongoing, and they call it uh, the Summer of Thunder. Now, the Summer of Thunder began on June, June 26th, and it's continuing through the 22nd of August. And what they do is they attract teams from the U.S. Uh, to take on international teams, and uh, it's just a great chance to get some extra uh, playing time, extra practice time. Uh, any Division One team going down to the Bahamas got 10 extra practices, and Marshall, believe me, has taken advantage of it. Of course, uh, the uh, marquee teams that have been part of this Bahamas Summer of Thunder, Kentucky, obviously, North Carolina uh, taking part in it, also the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, of course, Marshall, Alabama State from the MEAC, actually the SWAC, that is, Uh, Grand Canyon University, uh, Manhattan College from the Metro Atlantic Conference, uh, Truman State, which I believe, I'm not sure if they're in Division I or Division II, uh, Northern Arizona from the Big Sky Conference, Presbyterian College, uh, has, and then you had uh, some international teams, San Lorenzo uh, del Almagro, one of the uh, teams that Kentucky's playing, Team Toronto, uh, also uh, Mega Bimax, a uh, Serbia team, as we mentioned, and uh, then you have local teams from the Bahamas who are t- playing some of these American teams. The Atlantis All-Stars, the Bahamas All-Stars, the Bahamas National Team, CTG Knights, IBA Elite, MPBA All-Stars, the Providence Storm, and Star Sports Basketball. So if you love basketball, I'll tell you what, the, the Bahamas has been the place and is still the place this summer. A lot of good basketball being played down there and a lot of quality teams. But again, a great chance to go down to a beautiful place to, to uh, go. Atlantis and all these other resorts in the Bahamas. Uh, extra practices, uh, exposure. And one thing that you got to love, and I'm sure... John Calipari and Danny D'Antoni both love the fact they're getting their teams for this coming year together early, and uh, they're building that team relationship early, and it's going to be that much tighter when they get into the start of fall practices for the regular season. Now, how's Marshall going to play this? Well, Dan D'Antoni has been quoted as saying that, you know, we don't worry about the opponents, we don't know anything about the opponents, but... One of his uh, key things, he wants to get his young guys exposure and get them going against opposition. He says we're not going to play normal rotations, and he probably won't play the older guys much. Now, if you're a fan down there and, and you've watched Marshall in the NCAA tournament or other times, I'm sure they see John Elmore play, and they want to see C.J. Burks play, and um, some of the other uh, veterans for the herd they may not play that much for the simple fact that Coach D'Antoni wants to see the young kids play. He wants to see his freshmen get on that court and get experience because right now they're young pups. They are inexperienced. Uh, they put on some shows and practices this summer, but uh, this is going to be a great opportunity. Uh, of course, uh, this is going to be a good uh, chance for Iran Bennett to get on the court. Hopefully he can stay healthy. And he can do some things inside, as uh, Marshall fans and Coach Dan Tony hope he does. So uh, looking forward to all this basketball. Again, Kentucky, they start tomorrow night against the Bahamas national team. We'll have it at 630 on uh, AM 1340 in Ashland. You can hear it throughout the tri-state. Uh, UK plays 7 o'clock on Thursday, 7 o'clock on Saturday. And then Sunday, they wrap it up. On uh, at four o'clock, three thirty airtime against 
Team Toronto. Marshall plays on Saturday, 5 o'clock, against the University of the Bahamas. Monday at 5.30 against the NPBA All-Stars. And then Wednesday, next Wednesday at 6 against the Providence Storm. So looking forward to that. I hope a, a few fans get to go down for the herd. Uh, I know uh, the local uh, travel agency, Travel Doctors, offered a uh, travel uh, package. So hopefully you get to see a little bit of green in the stands at the Sir Kendall Isaacs Gymnasium down in the Bahamas. But this is going to be a great opportunity for both Marshall and UK playing this summer getting experience, and getting going. Right now, we're going to take our final break. When we come back, I'm going to wrap things up. Got a little bit more to talk about, a little bit of NASCAR, a little Ohio State football situation, a little news from the NFL camps. You're listening to The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 AM 930. The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Ten minutes before 6 o'clock. On the drive, Bill Cornwell sitting in for Paul Swan. And uh, a little bit later this evening, we got baseball on these very airwaves. Uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates shut out last night by Colorado 2-0. Well, the Rockies and uh, the Pirates will do battle again in Denver this evening. And uh, that game will get started about 8.40, so about 8.10, 8.15. We'll be on the air with the Pirates radio network this evening. Let's see what the Pirates do Uh of course, the Reds, they are in New York taking on the Mets. Cleveland Indians home tonight taking on uh, their rivals from the uh, American League Central, the Minnesota Twins. Last night, the Indians called the mercy rule, you might say. 10 nothing win for the Tribe last night against uh, the uh, Minnesota Twins. Uh, a little bit of sports news, uh, kind of sad news. Uh, of course, you know that uh, Paul Swan and I, we do love our hockey, and uh, a little bit of news from the, the hockey front today. Um, one of the greats, one of the greats of all time, Stan Mikita passed away. Uh, Stan Mikita was one of the uh, uh, was an icon with the Chicago Blackhawks. Passed away today at age seventy eight. Of course, if you watch the movie Wayne's World, you know about Stan Mikita because one of the uh, funny little uh, bits of that uh, movie was the guys hung out at Stan Makita Donuts. You might remember that he had the, the giant hockey uh, player on a, on a sign. That was Stan Makita. Well, Stan Makita passed away, age 78, uh, icon of the National Hockey League Hall of Famer. And uh, Chicago Blackhawks fans uh, mourning him because he was one of the all-time greats. Uh, NASCAR industry, uh, boy, there's a lot of folks upset with uh, the longtime chairman and CEO, Brian France. Of course, uh, he failed to stop at a stop sign and was arrested Sunday night in the Hamptons on charges of driving while intoxicated in misdemeanor possession of a controlled substance. Supposedly, it was oxycodone. Uh, he was released from jail Monday morning. And um, Bob Pockross of ESPN.com writing about this, he says... With uh, Brian France's leadership already in question, his NASCAR's attendance and TV ratings uh, have dropped in recent years. France could take this opportunity to make a permanent exit, not just take what uh, he is uh, calling an indef indefinite leave of absence, as uh, he announced last night. It would be a way for him to leave, not based on performance, but for bad decision-making. Now, uh, France has been... Uh, the uh, boss for NASCAR since 2003, and he's responsible for many great things. He created and negotiated a unified TV package that encompassed all the tracks, a commitment to diversity, overseeing a sport that hasn't had a, a uh, death in the National Series race since 2001. It's been safe racing, but is this a time for him to go? Is it a time for some fresh blood in leadership uh, with NASCAR. That's a big question going on, and that's a decision that Brian France and the France family are going to have to make. Hey, what's about the latest with the Ohio State football situation? Of course, the uh, suspension uh, with uh, Urban Meyer. Well, Ohio State has apparently never contacted Courtney Smith to discuss domestic assault allegations she made against her ex-husband, former Buckeyes assistant 
Coach Zach Smith. That's according to Courtney Smith's attorney, Julia Leverage. Leverage said today in a statement her client's a victim of domestic violence, adding that blaming the victim should be unacceptable. Leverage also said Smith has received absolutely no compensation for granting interviews to reporters. Smith told college football reporter Brett McMurphy last week Ohio State head coach Urban Meyer knew about a domestic abuse incident involving Smith and her ex-husband in 2015 and did not act Ohio State's investigating how Meyer handled the complaint. And they say that they will have a final decision within the next two weeks or so as to the uh, disposition of uh, the job for Urban Meyer. And, uh, of course, um, uh, Meyer is on administrative leave, placed there last week after Courtney Smith's interview with McMurphy. It's appeared a special working group uh, is uh, determining who at Ohio State knew about Zach Smith's actions when they knew, and if anyone acted improperly in handling the situation. Boy, this is a really ugly situation up there at Ohio State. Of course, uh, we brought you the news last week uh, that Zach Smith was actually on the Marshall staff for one year. Zach Smith was on Coach Doc Holliday's first uh, coaching staff with Marshall, lasted a year at Marshall, then went to Temple in the, after the 2010 season, of course, uh, Marshall uh, at the time uh, did uh, due diligence in the hiring of Zach Smith, and uh, there were no uh, red flags and no warning signs of any past problems between Zach Smith and now his former wife, Courtney Smith, to who he was married to at that time. Of course, Zach Smith, uh, a grandson to the former, uh, the late uh, coach of Ohio State, and that, of course, is Earl Bruce. So this situation with Ohio State and Urban Meyer and Zach Smith is going to go on for a little bit longer. And uh, it's kind of a, a ugly one, especially if you love the scarlet and gray. And so much was expected of uh, Ohio State this year. Of course, they're a top five in the preseason polls. But uh, it is uh, a situation that is really ugly, and hopefully uh, they can get resolved soon. Hey, what about our own Vinnie Curry? Marshall Great. Uh, now with the Tampa Bay Bucks, well, he got a visitor today, and the Tampa Bay Bucks got a visitor at training camp. And what visitors? Well, the Atlanta Falcons may have Ric Flair, but the Tampa Bay Bucks have their own WWE legend superfan, and that, of course, is the Hawkster. He is a true American. He was in attendance today at training camp practice for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Several Bucks players gushed over the chance to meet Hogan, who makes his home in nearby Clearwater, Florida. And one guy who was excited about it was our own Vinnie Curry. Quote from uh, Vinnie Curry, of course, world champion last year with the Philadelphia Eagles, now with the uh, Bucks. He says, man, I am glad nobody saw that I was shaking. Uh, Curry wore a WWE wristband in practice today. Curry said, that was my childhood hero. He's the reason I eat my vegetables and say my prayers. Take your vitamins and say your prayers, brother. And uh, Vinnie Curry posed with Hulk Hogan and also with uh, former WWE manager Jimmy, the mouth of the South Heart, who was there at uh, that uh, training camp appearance with Hulk Hogan, and I know, knowing Vinny Curry, that uh, it was uh, something special for him. Also, Bo Allen, one of the players, a defensive end for the uh, the, the uh, Bucks, was also involved with this photo. Big wrestling fan as well. Allen said, I'm definitely going to try to do everything I can to take him up on that, uh, that, uh, that uh, get pictures made. Vinny will too. I think Vinny and I would make a good pairing. Vinny's stage name's Flea, and I'm the Butter King. <laughs> Maybe the, a little bit of wrestling in the future for Bo Allen and Vinny Curry. I don't know. I don't know if, if the Buccaneers would go for that, but that is really funny right there. But uh, what a thrill because I know Vinny, and anybody that knows Vinny Curry knows that he does love him some pro wrestling. Of course, uh, Vinny. Uh, had his WWE championship belt, which he owns. Um, he had it in the Eagles uh, victory parade after the Super Bowl win last year. So uh, good, good for him. Man, it's been uh, a quick hour. Uh, thanks to John Cox from Southern Miss, voice of the Golden Eagles, for joining us. Gabriel Sellers, as always, we appreciate you engineering the old program. Uh, enjoyed it. 
Pirate Baseball tomorrow. I'll be back for a shortened version before Bengal football of the drive on Thursday. For Gabriel Sellers, Bill Cornwell saying so long. station.